Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan. I look a bit like a mess today and that's because I'm sick. Uh, both my husband and I got this weird, violent, 24-hour stomach bug thing, which has not been fun. I'm on day two now and I'm feeling much better than I did yesterday, but still not great. So I'm home from work today. Um, I did get tested this morning and ruled out that it's not COVID, but it was something nasty. But uh, I still wanted to start this video because I want to get it up around Valentine's Day. And that's because I am reading a romance series. I am reading the Brown Sisters trilogy. If you are an avid watcher of book two, I'm sure you have heard of these books, but it is basically a trilogy of romances that follow three different sisters. The first is Get a Life Chloe Brown. The second is Take a Hint Danny Brown. And the third book is Act your age Eve Brown. Other than that basic premise being that these are three sisters and their three romances, I don't know much about the plots of each of them. I just know that people are obsessed with these books and I have to know why. It's this weird nosiness in me that just has to know what everyone is falling in love with. I have a feeling I'm not gonna love these books as much as everyone else. That's just because I don't typically read a lot of romance. I don't love romance. I have very picky and particular tastes when it comes to romance and I don't think these are quite it. But on the other hand, I'm like, everybody loves them. How can they not be good? So I'm gonna try them out. I'm gonna read them. I have actually started Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I am on page 138, which is chapter nine. It is okay so far. It's a little cheesy. So this one follows Chloe Brown, obviously. She is the oldest sister and she suffers from chronic pain. And this chronic pain prevents her from doing a lot of the stuff she wants to do in life, like going out and exploring and traveling or just doing things that are like dangerous but fun. And one day, it's actually the prologue, she uh, has a near-death experience where her life flashes before her eyes and she realizes, wow, my life kind of sucks. Like I don't really do anything. I need to live a better life, a life more worth living is basically the setup. And then she creates this list, her get a life list, of things that she wants to do in order to fulfill her life. Like she wants to ride on a motorcycle and she wants to go backpacking and a few other things. And she ends up getting with um, this guy who is the superintendent of her apartment building, I think, this guy right here. And she kind of strikes up a deal with him that he will help her complete this list if she does something for him. So it's fun. I like the list aspect. I always love people like checking things off a list or doing scavenger hunts or games or things like that. Things where they have to like do things throughout a book. I find that fun. I also definitely appreciate the conversation about her chronic pain and how it impacts her relationship. Even with this guy who she's letting into some pretty intimate details of her life, she still doesn't want to like tell him that she has chronic pain and this is why she struggles to do some seemingly ordinary easy things in life. It's really interesting to get that perspective. Definitely not one we get um, enough in books or very much in books and I think it definitely helps just gain some empathy or some perspective that not all people are going through the same things. It's always good to just take a step back and realize that people might be going through things that make seemingly simple tasks harder. So I like that. As far as the romance, like I said, kind of cheesy. Um, I'm realizing that I don't really like grumpy guys. Like our main character is very much just a gruff, like stoic, kind of grumpy person who doesn't really like to show his emotions, doesn't really like to show like that he's having fun or that he enjoys things. That's definitely not what I find attractive in men. I like men who are passionate and who are outwardly excited about things. So I think that's part of it too, is I'm just not finding myself attracted to this love interest, which doesn't have to be the case in romances. I know that, but I think that might be my personal block into getting into romances is that I would prefer to find the love interest attractive. And if it didn't show like that depiction of him, like he's this redhead white guy, I don't know, kind of biker dude, but that also gives off like lumberjack vibes. Um, if it didn't give that depiction, I would definitely be picturing Roy Kent from Ted Lasso if you watched that, who again is just like a guy who does nothing but grunt at things because he's just grumpy. So that's that. We'll see if he changes or improves or whatever. He's an artist, so he has an artistic creative uh, vulnerable side that I'm assuming will come through at the end, but we'll see uh, if it does it for me. I have been listening to the audiobook up to this point. It's on Hoopla. I actually didn't realize that this was like a British book. And so the narrator of the audiobook is English with a British accent and it's fine, but I'm finding myself having to really pay attention to what she's saying or else I can't, you know, I can't understand her if I'm not 
paying complete attention and maybe slowing it down to slower than I would normally listen to an audiobook. So I'm gonna start reading with my eyeballs and see how I like that in comparison if I like reading it in, you know, my own voice instead of listening to that British narrator. And I'll let you know if that makes a difference for me at all. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I have nothing really else to do other than just relax today and try to recover. So I'm going to take advantage of this reading time and we'll let you know when I have an update on this first book. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. But all will be okay, I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. I've changed for the better this time. I thought I would never be fine. Hi guys, I have an update. I finished Chloe Brown. I'm a little bummed out because I don't love this as much as everyone else does. And that's not wholly unexpected. I don't typically love romances that everyone else loves, but I was hoping that this would do it for me. I think I just didn't super connect with Chloe and Red. Even though they're super mature and um, they have like their realistic issues and they work through them really well and healthily, that's awesome. I just don't think their personalities worked for me super well. Also the narrator I think had something to do with it and I only think that because I have started Take a Hint Danny Brown and this has a different audiobook narrator and I really like this one. So I think that's just a personal preference thing but I'm gonna give Get a Life Chloe Brown three stars. It's not bad, just not for me. The good news is I'm actually liking Danny Brown a lot more. And I mean that like I actually like the character Danny Brown a lot. She is um, like an academic. She is a PhD student so she's spending a lot of time studying and at school and like teaching classes and I think I just connect with her more as a person. I'm realizing though that this love interest, Zaph, is Roy Kent. If you have watched Ted Lasso, like his personality is this guy. Way more than Red from the first book who was also kind of grumpy but he was more like like silently broody. This guy is outwardly grumpy. Like he growls, literally growls, and he yells like the F word all the time. And he's like big and hairy. So <laughs> this I'm totally picturing Roy Kent um, and I like Danny Brown. So I hope that I continue to like this one. I am right now on page 110. So I'm a bit into it. So I feel like it's a good sign that I'm enjoying it so far. We will see how the romance develops and if it gets me, you know, feeling things and I will let you know at that point when I have an update. I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change Been through a lot of pain Okay, I have finished Take a Hint Danny Brown. I'm so excited to talk about this one, you guys. I really enjoyed it. Like I think I mentioned, I really liked Danny as a character. I really related to her. And so I think that that was just an automatic um, like point in this book's favor. I also liked, while I didn't necessarily love the love interest, um, I believed their attraction to each other. And more than anything, I believed like their history together. This story is basically Danny is a PhD student at this college and he works at the college and so they've known each other for a while and they kind of uh, like are both attracted to each other but haven't really done anything about it so they've kind of gotten to know each other as friends but never really done more than that and then one day there's a fire drill and Danny gets stuck in the elevator so Zaf like rescues her and carries her out and Somebody takes a video and it goes viral of the two of them. That part's a little unbelievable to me, but that's what kind of kicks off their romance. Um, he is starting like a foundation or something and that publicity would really help him. So he's interested in pursuing like a fake relationship with Danny to keep that momentum going. And so that's what they do. And eventually they obviously fall in love. And I just find myself liking friends to lovers romances more than other types of romances i think just because there's history there and it's more believable that the people like each other for themselves and not just for like the immediate attraction so i really like that in this book um i'm gonna give it four stars it's not like my new favorite book or anything i didn't cry nothing made me emotional and usually that's what really 
puts me over the edge for romance books. So it's not quite a full five star, but it is a four star. I found it really enjoyable and I'm really glad that I liked this so much. So now I'm gonna get to the third book, Eve's book, and I guess I'll be back when I'm a little bit into that and have an update on what I think about that one. Things are not the same as they were a year ago, but I'll be okay. I move on each and every day. The past is where it stays, way back a year ago. Okay, I did it you guys. I finished Act Your Age Eve Brown. I didn't really get a chance to update you part way or anything because I kind of flew through it. I started it in the car as you saw and then I did some reading sprints with um, the online book club I'm part of and it was just a really quick read. So I'm pleasantly surprised by that. I'm also pleasantly surprised and happy to say that I enjoyed it. I also really enjoyed Eve Brown as a character. Um, I would say just as much as I liked Danny Brown in the second book because she is just super fun and carefree and doesn't really care what people think about her. The story in this one is Eve. At the beginning of the book, she, uh, it sounds like she's like floating from job to job. She doesn't really have a passion in life or a thing that she's pursuing. And she ends up uh, like planning this wedding that goes really wrong. There's this big accident that happens with the uh, doves or the birds um, and her parents approach her and say, hey Eve, we really need you to buckle down and try to get a job and hold one steady job for an entire year. And then we know that you have, you know, grown up and we can trust you to be an adult with a job and take care of yourself. And so she goes off kind of in a fit, like <laughs> mad at her parents. And then she ends up finding this job, landing randomly in this job interview to become a cook at a bed of breakfast. And it starts out, um, she meets this main love interest guy, I already forget his name, Jacob, and she ends up hitting him with her car. And so rightfully so, he doesn't really like her at the beginning or trust her or anything, but then obviously the romance develops. I will say the romance, I didn't love as much as the second book. Um, I think that one, just the friends to lovers really worked for me. I liked their history. In this one, they obviously didn't have any history. They just meet for the first time in this book. So it's a little bit harder for me to get on board with their romance and them being like super in love in such a short period of time. But I at least can understand why they dislike each other at the beginning and then why it turns um, into more of an attraction thing because they did have that uh, car hitting accident versus like Chloe Brown. They also don't like each other at the start of the romance, but I didn't really get why because they um, like lived in the same apartment building. He was a super and for some reason they just didn't like each other, but it didn't, didn't really explain why and it changed a little too quickly for me to really believe that they had any reason to dislike each other. So I'm gonna give this also four stars, but like I said, I think I liked it slightly less than Take a Hint Danny Brown. So if I were to order them, you can obviously guess, but Danny Brown on top, Eve Brown in the middle, and Chloe Brown on bottom with a four star, a four star, and a three star. And honestly, I'm surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised to say that I did enjoy this series. Am I absolutely in love with them? No. Are they my new favorite books? No. But did I enjoy them more than I honestly expected to? Yes, so that is definitely a win. I am super glad to know what all the hype is about, what everyone is talking about when they talk about this trilogy. And if Talia Hibbert comes out with more romance books, I don't know that I would necessarily pick it up right away, just again, because romance is not my favorite thing. But if it got as much hype and buzz as these ones and people praise it so highly, maybe I would give it a chance. So those are my surprising results for this reading vlog. Please let me know if you've read this book series, if you plan to or want to, or if you enjoy romance or not really. And if you're not typically a romance reader, let me know if I have changed your mind at all in whether you want to try out these books. But other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So I'm gonna wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago.